Let's do some actual examples with problems solving for circular motion type of things. The first one is a helicopter rotor is spinning at 350 RPM or rounds per minute. If the blades are 3.2 meters long, how fast is the tip of the blade moving and what is the centripetal acceleration? I just want to point out when you're thinking of things like this, how that different points on the blade are moving at a different speed. Because the tip of the blade obviously has the furthest to travel, that has to move the fastest speed. So while the blades all together have a certain frequency or period, in this case 350 RPM, each point on the blade is moving at a different speed and that's why the radius becomes important and we're talking about 3.2 meters out. But it should be kind of obvious that if you go halfway in that point's going to be moving at a slower speed and very close to the center of the helicopter is moving at a much slower speed yet. So basically we're given that frequency is equal to 350 RPM. Uh, we're going to need to convert that probably. Uh, so again the rounds per minute just means that minutes is on the bottom so we could have also written it as 350 per minute which we're going to times by uh, one minute having 60 seconds to see what the frequency is in seconds so our frequency in seconds should be 5.833 hertz we're also given that the blades are 3.2 meters long, which we're going to call the radius. And we are wondering the tangential velocity, or the centripetal velocity, of these blade tips. So this should be fairly straightforward to solve with our equation. Uh, the centripet centripetal velocity is equal to 2 pi r over the period. Now you'll notice we have frequency given to us instead of period. So I could either use my conversion between them and find the period as being 1 over the frequency or knowing that fact I can switch my formula and just instead of having a period on the bottom I'll put a frequency on the top so then I get 2 pi r frequency so these two are equivalent so this will be the same thing as 2 times pi times our radius is 3.2 meters times our frequency which is 5.833 and I'm going to use uh, per second here I like to keep those units that helps me uh, realize that my answer here is going to be in meters per second so let's do 2 times pi times 3.2 times 5.8333 is equal to 117.2 217.29 like I said my units are in meters per second my final answer should be to two significant digits so that's uh, I guess the 1.2 times 10 squared meters per second so the velocity at the tip remember 1.2 times 10 squared meters now we were also asked to find the centripetal acceleration. I'm just going to do that in a different color over here. Notice that we have two possible formulas for finding this centripetal acceleration. One of them uses velocity and the other one doesn't. Now since I just calculated velocity I could use that one but I'm not going to because in case I made a mistake when I calculated velocity then that mistake is going to transfer into this part as well. So I'm going to stick with the formula that doesn't use velocity since I have everything else I need anyway. 4 pi squared times r divided by t, the period squared. Again, with the period on the bottom, I can switch it with frequency on top, so I'm going to turn this into 4 pi squared r f squared. And then we'll solve that one. So 4 pi squared times 3.2 meters squared times 5.833 per second, all squared. Now I just noticed I'm checking if my units will work and I see meters squared per second squared. Well, that's because I made a mistake way back here. So this square doesn't belong there, it belongs there. The way my final units are meters per second squared. So let's punch that one out on our calculator. So 4 times pi squared times 3.2 times 5.8333. Nope. 
No, sorry, that one has got to be squared. So this has to be this last number squared. So 4,298.7. 4299 meters per second squared is our acceleration, which if we turn it into two sig digs is 4.3 times 10 cubed meters per second squared. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's a big number. How could I double check if that's going to be right? We could, of course, double check with our other formula of v squared over r. Since I had about 120 as my velocity, if I quickly try 120 squared and divide it by the radius of 3.2, just a quick check, 4,500, I got 4,300, so I, I'm definitely close. I'm in the right ballpark. So now I can say the centripetal acceleration is 4.3 times 10 cubed meters per second squared. Cool. Let's try another example. Barry finds a mass of 200 grams, which is attached to a string of 0.8 meters. And since Barry is a dangerous person, he starts swinging this thing in a circle above his head when it's traveling at 3.1 meters per second. And we're asked to find what is the tension in the string. So let's draw a quick little diagram of this Barry guy here. Here's Barry. He's holding this string of 0 0.8 meters here. It's going to be the radius of our circle. And he's, he's ridiculously swinging this thing around in his head. He's got this mass here of 200 grams sitting at the end of it. It's always nice to have a diagram just so we are sure we understand what's going on. We've got a mass of 200 grams, a radius of 0 0.8 meters, and a velocity of 3.1 meters per second. We're asked to find the tension in the string. You might be thinking, whoa, tension in the string, this goes back to some other kind of concepts, but no, actually the tension in the string is the only thing holding that mass in the circle. So if I would if I would just draw this mass right here, we have the centripetal force pulling it into the circle and that's what's keeping it going in a circle so it doesn't escape and fly well we hope it doesn't escape. It'll fly through the window or something. So this centripetal force is actually equal to the force of tension in the string. That's really the only force that there is acting on this mass. It's, a, it's the, what it is causing its centripetal acceleration. So don't get confused by the language. We really, all we need to find here is the centripetal force, even though it's called the force of tension. Now we know that we don't have a direct formula for centripetal force. We just go with F equals MA and we're talking about centripetal acceleration and then we replace that with whichever one we need. So it's going to be equal to m and for our centripetal acceleration we can use v squared over r since we know all of those factors. Our mass here is 200 grams and this is physics so we use the SI units so this is 0 0.200 kilograms and the velocity is 3.1 meters per second and that has to be squared and the radius is 0 0.8 meters. So let's pull our giant calculator up beside Barry here. 0 0.200 which is not necessary to write that in there. 0 0.2 times 3.1 squared divided by 0.8 should give us 2.4025 units here kilograms times meters squared per second squared divided by meters is kilograms times meters per second squared which you might recognize as being newtons so we now need to answer in actually only one significant digit so we're going to say this is approximately equal to two newtons. So the force of tension is two newton. All right, those are two example problems. Hopefully they will help you to solve your own physics problems.